refer to angels. We are about at the end of the lesson talk about of uh, thank you angels. So can somebody remind us the title of of this week lesson? What was the title? The Son of God, Creator of the Universe. What do we know about the Son of God? Who is the Son of God? Who is the Son of God? There's no one else. Yes, (laughs) except you. Thank you. Jesus Christ, yes. So what do we know about Jesus Christ? And and we want to be very, everybody to participate. What do we know about Jesus Christ? Let us go first. What is Jesus for us? He's the creator. He's the creator. What else? He's our savior. Yes, Jesus Christ is our redeemer. What else? Very important. What he's doing now as we speak? Is our intercessor. Is the mediator between us and God. So one thing that's very important for us, sometimes we, we do forget, it is important for us to study this lesson. Jesus Christ is much more than our Redeemer. He is also the creator of the universe. Very important. So as we read, as we study... In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, God had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Every word of this verse is important. In the last days, God spoke to us by his Son. There are two things from Jesus Christ. Whom he had appointed heir of all things. Jesus Christ is the heir of all things. Everything would be for him. But also by whom also he made the worlds. So God is like this, this engineer, this great engineer who designed things, but Christ is the one that established things, that created, said, okay, God says something, and Jesus Christ did it. So Jesus Christ is the creator of the worlds. So now we let us go to, quickly to the spirit of prophecy, the desire of ages, page 20. It was Christ that spread the heavens. You see in the Bible they said the heavens will be like a squall that can be that can be squall that can be spread out. It is Christ that spread the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth. This earth has a fun, to stand upon something it got to have a foundation. And it is Christ who laid the foundation of the earth. It is it was his hand that hung the world's in space. Everything is hung in the, is hung in the, in, in the universe. You can see that. As a matter of fact, if we want to replicate the universe, we can have a lot of balls with cords in them hanging. But it is Christ who hung them together. And he says, and fashioned the flowers of the field. So now let us go closer, closer to us now. When you see the birds, who created the birds? Jesus Christ. What about the lilies of the field, the flowers? Jesus Christ. His strength set fire the mountains. If you take the mountains, for instance, if you go to Jamaica, Haiti, in Romania, in the U.S. too, they have tall mountains. Who made those mountains? Jesus Christ. Remember those things. The sea is his, and he made them, Psalm 65 or 6. And he says that, it was he that filled the earth with beauty, the fish, and the air with song, and upon all things in earth and air and sky, the seas, he wrote the message of the Father's love. In everything that you see in the, in the, in the universe, you can see love. As a matter of fact, we saw last week, you can even see the cross of Jesus Christ on those things. That means the love. When we see the cross of Jesus Christ, that's a sign of, of love. So now our first part, communication from God. So what happened after sin, the introduction of sin? How did God speak to the, to the fathers? And when we say to the fathers, mean to, to, to the prophets, to Noah, to Abraham, to Adam and Eve. Imagine Adam and Eve sin. There was a separation. 
And how come, how come God talked to them? Can somebody help us? Let us go to Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1. And so, uh, Sister Lowen, could you read it for us? Hebrew chapter 1 verse 1. Yes. So in the past, God used the, the, the elders, the patriarchs, the patriarchs, the prophets to talk to us. But you know now there was sin. And God cannot come close to a uh, close face to face. The face to face communion was gone. So what is the key way, the media that God used to communicate with the fathers? Then to us. What is the, the key? The Holy Spirit. Let us go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Sister Avila, could you read for us 2 Peter? Sister Avila, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For the prophets that came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thank you. So everything in this, this book were, were inspired except one part. Can somebody tell us what part of the Bible that was not inspired, that was directly from God? That was the only part in the Bible that is not inspired but directly from God. Let us make man the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments was directly from God. We speak on this word. God speak those words. But after that, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all the prophets, Ezekiel, John, and also the teaching of Jesus Christ. The teaching of it was direct. The teaching of Jesus Christ was direct. But everything as the prophet, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. As we read, for in, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Let us now, now go into the great controversy. Before the entrance of sin, Adam enjoyed open communion with his maker, face to face. But since man separated himself from God by transgression, the human race has been cut off from, his high, from this high privilege. But now, by the plan of redemption, however, a way has been opened whereby the inhabitants of the earth may still have connection with heaven. That's amazing. God has communicated with men by his spirit. And divine light has been imparted to the world by revelation to his chosen servant. We have a perfect book, the book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we forget about that. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now let us go into B. How has God revealed himself in the last days? What about in our days? 2,000 years ago. How did God reveal himself? Again, let us go to Hebrew chapter 1 verse 2. Sister Janet, could you read for us Hebrew, the first chapter verse 2. Mm -hmm. whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Amen. So now let us go to John. We need to, those two verses, they are key for us. When we go to this world and talk to some people who say, oh, Jesus Christ was just another prophet. We need to know those verses. John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. Sister Lauren, Sister Brother Chris, could you read for us? John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. Could you read it for us? Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficed us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And he has thou not known me, Philip. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? See this way now. A great revelation. Philip, you know Philip, has a, a habit, Philip always introduced someone to Jesus Christ. That was his, a gift from the Lord, a gift of the Spirit to Philip. 
Everyone should know that Philip always introduced someone to Jesus Christ. But there is something with Philip. Philip said, show me the Father. He asked this question to Jesus. And what was the, what was the answer from Christ? He said, have I been so long with you, Philip? And you asked us a question. He that had seen me had seen the Father. How say us that then? Show us the Father. Now, yes, go up, word when the mind. One thing that we have to understand uh, is that sometimes we are uh, confused because yes. the last days, for example, we believe that this is the last days. Yes. But according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, in the last days, God spoke by His Son. Yes. But that is 2,000 years ago. That's right. So 2,000 years ago, it was also last days. Mm -hmm. What do we mean by that? That was the last days of the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was focusing mm -hmm. the coming of Messiah. That's right. And that was the end mm -hmm. of the fulfillment of the all Old Testament. And then, and then he, when he came, as you mentioned, that he showed God. Not only speaking, yes. but he showed. Yes. So that was the end. But now, today, the last day is today, the end of the New Testament. After his, his uh, ascension, Thank you. now until he comes again. That is the end. We are in the last days. So, although we use the word last days in Hebrew chapter 1 2, is end last days of the Old Testament. Testament. You get it. As a very a very light, great light that brought the Maya bring on towards this point. Thank you very much. Now, let us go into the spirit of prophecy, the Review and Herald, August 26, 19, 1909. The creator of men. He who upon Mount Sinai proclaimed the eternal law. Remember, Jesus Christ spoke him the eternal law. The creator of men, again, and we just talk about that, in his dying agony vindicated his right to pardon transgression and sin. Because to pardon transgression and sin is an attribute of, of God. Not only Jesus Christ healed, right? But also he forgives a sin and transgression. Why? Because himself is, is God. But now we will study in a few minutes what happened. That was amazing this lesson. How come Jesus Christ become God? We need to know that. That's something that's a very important lesson. Because when we go into this world, people will talk everything about Jesus Christ, but he's, but he's been God. The divinity of God, of Christ. Let us talk, let us go to a lesson on Monday. Christ, the Father, and the angels. First part, we will see the relationship, the connection between Christ and the Father, then the connection between Christ and the angels. So Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3. Sister Lowen, could you read for us? Hebrew, the first chapter, verse 3. Amen. So Jesus Christ is the brightness of the glory of God. So when we look at God, when we look at the, the throne of God, it's the throne of glory. What is this glory? Jesus Christ is the brightness of the glory of God. But another thing also, Jesus Christ is the express image of the person of God. That's why Jesus Christ can proclaim the Ten Commandments. Jesus Christ himself also can forgive sin and transgression. Yeah. Go ahead, Brother Nehemiah. Also in Hebrew 1, 3. Yes. In the brightness of his glory. Yes. His glory is his character. That's right. And Jesus, Jesus revealed exactly God's character as it Thank is. you. Thank you. Remember, whenever we see glory is the character of, of God. And what is the character of God? The law. The Ten Commandments also is an expression. That's why Jesus Christ himself personified the Ten Commandments. Now, now let us see the relationship between Christ and the Father. Now let us go to John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are 
1. Very important. Short verse is very important. That's why Christ is do not he plagiarize his, rob, his privilege. Him and his father, they are one. Now let us see now, what is the position of Christ in relation to the angels? You see now, now we are going something, a different level now of the angels. The angels, they are superior of us because they are made of light. Very important. They are but Jesus Christ himself made himself a little bit lower to come to us. Become a human being to live among us. So now let us go to Hebrew chapter 1 verses 4 and 6. Remember, we are studying the book of Hebrews. That's a very important book, the book of Hebrews. Sister Janet, could you read for us Hebrew chapter 1 verses 4 to 6? Go ahead. Yes. So now let us go together. Being made so much better than the angels. So Christ is higher than the angels. Right? As he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than thee. Now let us go for unto verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. God never said that to an angel. Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. Sometime, but the name I may explain that further. In heaven, a, a, an event take place. God presented Jesus Christ to the, to, the, to the angels. And God said, Thou art as a very important time. And God said, Thou art my son. And you see that many times, even in the ministry of Christ, at his baptism, at his resurrection, every time God repeat that, You are my son. And God openly says, and we see that in Psalm chapter 2, God said, you are my son. Everybody is watching. That's the anointment of Jesus Christ. This day I have begotten thee. Remember John 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not, but shall have everlasting life. So remember he said today I have begotten thee and again I will be to him a father. Everybody is watching. I will be to him a father, the father of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ will be to God a son. And again when he bring in the, when he bring them in the first begotten into the world. That's another title for Jesus Christ. The first begotten into the world. He said let all the angels of God Worship him. But we know someone and a third of them never wanted to worship Jesus Christ. Do you know who is that person? Lucifer. Lucifer. And God said, let all the angels worship him. That's very important. That's why in the lesson we see that we should ourselves never worship an angel. We should never, if you see in your dream, whatever, in a vision, an angel come to you, even the angel Gabriel, we should not worship the angel Gabriel. But the angel Gabriel and us, they are fellow servants to worship Jesus Christ. So very important. But anyway, you have something to say? Well, yes, go ahead. One thing that, um, because when we say Jesus is the Son of God, for example, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, when, it, when we read that Bible verse, we have imagination in our mind, like a, you know, Emma, like a, like a, you know, writer, a little one. Yes. And father and son and daughter, you know. So, with this concept, we sometimes think God and Christ. Yes. But it's not that way. But what we understand here, we, especially in, uh, Thou art my son, at his incarnation, when he was born, 
when at his baptism, at, at his resurrection, the God the Father said, this is my son. So we understand that actually we do not know for eternity past. But what we understand when he came to this earth as our Savior, he received the name Son. Because he was born and he was he was baptized, which is a symbol of new birth. That's and, what, mm -hmm. and he was resurrected and symbol of new life. So at this stage, Jesus was called my son. And he became a son to be our examples. So when we read John 3.16, he gave for his only begotten son, that is Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth. But we do not know what had happened in the past. The only way that we know is when he got to heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Now let us go into the spirit of prophecy. The first chapter of Hebrews contrasts the position of the angels and the position of Christ. God has spoken his word concerning Christ that are not to be applied to the angels. So what are the angels? The angels, they are sent. What are the duty? They are sent for to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Remember Sister Tabitha talked about this morning about the angels. Yes. The angels are also in the plan of redemption. That's why in the sanctuary service, you see the pictures of the angel embroidered everywhere. The angels also, they are part of the plan of salvation. For you to come here this morning without molestation, to go to the wet pavement, to make the decision, it was the, the, the holy angels who direct you safely here this morning. You have to remember that. And also we have to be thankful for the duty of the holy angels, the protectors. Many times things happen to us. An accident, a car just crossed over of us. That's an angel who will train us, who protect us. And also we will see that at the end of the lesson, God used them. They are so powerful. It takes only one angel to destroy a 1,800 45, uh, 45 uh, 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 soldiers. So we have to be very, uh, we have to be aware of that. So angel, they are ministering spirit sent by God to minister on those, on to those who will be heirs of the plan of salvation. Every one of us this morning, we have this hope that one day will be heir of Jesus Christ. That will be safe. This earth will become to us one, one day. You see now people are fighting. We cannot buy a piece of land. We can, the house, if you have to rent your house, is very expensive. The time will come, the meek shall inherit this earth. Go ahead, Brother Nehemiah. Yes, we are studying today about Christ, yes. the Son of God. But in Old Testament time, many times Christ appeared as the, as the angel. Yes. Now, why? There must be some reason. Because after sin, after sin, the angels were sent to yes. minister those who should be saved. So, human beings, they have more familiarity with the angels. While nobody has seen God. Yes. Nobody has seen God but the angels. This is why when Jesus came to this earth, he came so many times like uh, Genesis, Exodus, he came like in Joshua. The he burning came in bush. The form of the angel. That's why. The reason was so that people can uh, frighten or run away, but to 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 meet and understand who he was. Yes. So when we see here, Jesus was when he was came, when he came to this uh, earth, he had a uh, body little lower than the angel. In other words, with human being, the angel is closest. Yes. Same created being. Yes. But when we when we see that Christ, why? Because we are focusing on Christ, but what is the angel? Because many think the angel and Christ are the same. 
Because Christ is archangel, we say. That's right, yeah. So it means angels. Mm -hmm. But he is different. He is the creator of the evil angels. Exactly. Thank you. Now, and to choose the toward my son. Who said that toward my son? Who said that? Father. The father said that. And now remember also the book of, of Psalm. It's a big book. A lot of Psalm in it. And also it's a book of prophecy. So what was prophesied by the psalmist David with God in Jesus Christ? As we read in Psalm chapter 2 verse 7. Can somebody read it for us? Psalm, uh, Sister Frida, could you read for us Psalm chapter 2 verse 7? Uh, if your eyes permit Amen. You see now, you see the, 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 the word, the game, the word game now? I cannot say the word game. So it is because the psalmist David was inspired. It was not, it was, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he said, Thou art my son, I declare, I will declare the decree, the Lord said unto me, Thou art my son. You see now that the psalmist David, psalmist David talking now, he was inspired by God. You remember what we studied in the last days? God spake unto the, the fathers by the Holy Spirit. David, David was inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's why when you see, say, what's going on? I cannot understand. He said, I will declare that the Lord has said unto me. Who is me now? Jesus Christ. Thou art my son, and this day I have begotten thee. At one point in time, that's what Brother Nehemiah mentioned, we will know about how God begotten thee. Very important. God gave himself to us through Jesus Christ. This is another big truth. This is how God can give himself to us. Through Jesus Christ. God has begotten Jesus Christ. Now let us go into the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Hebrew chapter 1 verse 6. And again, when he bring in the first begotten into the world. Another title of it, the first begotten into the world. He said, and let all the angels of God worship him. You see now later the, 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 the devil will come. And ask Jesus Christ to worship him. And what Jesus Christ said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord, and him alone shall worship. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ also is God. And knowing this, the devil went away. And also at the baptism of Jesus Christ, what do we, we, we at the baptism of Jesus, what took place? And Jesus Christ coming straight up of the water. That's why remember when we get baptized, we need to be under the water. A perfect example, Jesus comes straight up of the water. And a door, the Holy Spirit come into Jesus Christ. And there was a voice that was heard by everybody. What was the voice? Tell what? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We wish one day our Father in heaven would do the same to us. This is my son. This is my daughter. In whom I will please. Also, at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he says in Acts chapter 13, verse 32, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And also, Jesus Christ is the firstborn from the dead. You see now, Jesus Christ go to a lower level for us. He become the firstborn from the dead. Why? He become lower. That's a sacrifice. That's why Jesus Christ become. A little, he knows, he, he knows, he experienced death to save us. He become the first born of the death. And also with God, Brother Nehemiah. Yes, this uh, verse is, uh, I think I mentioned one more time, but um, Psalms 2 7 yes. is the prophecy that God will come as a son. Yes. And this is why, after this verse, we know that, uh, like when, when, Angel Gabriel came to Joseph mm -hmm. when he came to uh, Mary about son. Yes. You shall have a son. In Isaiah, son was given. And, and, uh, you know, and then it says in Psalms 2 7, says, Thou art my son, this day. This day have I, I have begotten thee. So that day, there is a day that Christ became a son, begotten. Yes. And this is what John speaks about, John 3.16. He gave only his begotten son. 
So when was he begotten? Because many people today, they believe that Christ was only begotten like a human being. And some other extreme is he's a God. So today, uh, most of the Christian world, they're, cry, they're set, putting Christ down, Christ down, or oh, he's my friend. He's my friend. Yes, many. And they're teaching Christ is friend. What, whatever you do, however, Christ is sinner, uh, friend of sinner. That's totally correct in one sense, but not every sense. Mm -hmm. That is the Lord, the Lord. And, and another extreme, another extreme is He's a God. He's in heaven always. I'm here. So there's no relationship. So mm -hmm. this is two extremes. Satan tried to, you know, keep ourselves away yes. from God. Yes. But what we see here, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So when was this day here? And we are studying here at this incarnation, when he was born, when he was baptized, when he was resurrected. Yes. He, and when he became a priest, priest yes. he was called, you are, thou art my son. That's right. And so, we have to understand the begotten son, the word begotten son in John 3, 16, what is the meaning? When he was born, because some theologians, they say, Christ was born in heaven. Mm. Like, like a father and son. But the Bible says, He is a brightness of His glory. He is a God. You know? Mm -hmm. so, so we have to have, under, the reason why we are studying this lesson, yes. is we can have a clear picture who Jesus is, yes. so we can have others who do not love. Amen, amen. And as we speak now, who, where is Jesus Christ as we speak? He's in heaven making intercession for us, but also at the right hand of the Father, at the right seat, at the right hand of the Father. And also we see in B, how does the Father address the Son? In Hebrew chapter, Hebrews, chapter, first chapter, verses 7 to 13. And he said, Thy throne, but unto the Son, speaking of Jesus, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Jesus Christ has a throne, and his throne is forever and ever. And as you read at the end, it says, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And this took place when Jesus Christ was anointed as a priest. And that day, the oil went, the anointment, and the Holy Spirit, we got the Holy Spirit also, came unto us. Two things take place. The anointment of Jesus Christ in heaven, and also, we receive the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So uh, further now, and was, who is the only one to be worshipped? As we read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, and Jesus Christ in so into the devil, he said, he said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. Remember, we shall not worship no other one, even an angel, even... Well, no matter the, the rank of the, the angel, either a seraphim or a cherubim, he should not. And we see a perfect example with the prophet John. When the prophet John was inclined, he saw this marvelous angel. He was inclined to worship the angel Gabriel. What warning did he receive from the angel? What was the word of the angel? As, as we read in Revelation chapter 9, verse 10. Sister Avela, could you read for us? Revelation 19, verse 10. Amen. So we should not worship even angel. The only one we should worship is Jesus Christ and God the Father. So and let us go to E. Why did Jesus accept to be worshipped? We have many instances where Jesus Christ will accept the worship, particularly of a leper. And we see in Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Jesus accepted the worship. And God saying, Lord, if thou will, the man said, Lord, 
if thou will, thou canst make me clean. Jesus, in that day, accept. Because, you see, God anointed, in verse Hebrew chapter 1, verse 9, that was love, righteousness, and hated iniquity. Therefore, therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy baby. So, Jesus Christ was anointed as God. And God said, let all the angels of God worship him. So, therefore, Jesus Christ accept worship. Now, let us go talk about the heavenly angels. What are they? Who are they? The, the heavenly angels. As we study this one, they are ministers. You see, Jesus Christ came to minister unto us. Not to be minister unto, but to minister. The same as the angels, they have a duty to minister to us who will be saved. Go ahead, Sister Avila. Yes, an angel is in camp around us. Yes, as the verse we see. All those who fear God, we can call it guardian angels, there is an angel in camp around us and protect us. In other words, to deliver us, as you will see in the verse. As we read in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 14, are they not all minister in spirit? An angel is a minister in spirit, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. That's amazing. I like that. Divine ministration is needed. Why? To give power and efficiency to the church. Angels from the courts above are sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation. Those who as faithful warriors are partaking of Christ's suffering. So we are also warriors. An angel, that's why they call the God the God of hosts. There's a host. There's an army in heaven. A host of angels. Angelics. And they are ready to destroy. Even their, their glory put together. Can destroy. We will see that in a few minutes. Uh, one angel. One angel. Destroy a whole army. Of people. What is promised to those who fear the Lord? To answer your question. In Psalm 34 verse 7. The angel of the Lord and camp, <clears throat> what you call guardians, an angel close to you, run about them, run about every one of us that fear him, but we need to fear God and deliver us. Yes. So you see now, we need to be humble. All the heavenly angels are at our service, at the service of the humble, believing people of, of God. If we are unbelievers, that's not a good angel standing beside you. <laughs> you see, that's a wicked angel. We need to understand better than we do the mission of the angels. <clears throat> so we need to be very careful. And he says also, if so, he says, when, we, when you rise in the morning, do you feel your helplessness and your need of strength from God? And do you humbly, heartily make known your wants to your, to your heavenly Father? If so, angels mark your prayers. And if these prayers have not gone forth out of fine lips, when you are in danger of unconsciously doing wrong and exerting an influence which will lead others to do wrong, your guardian angel, yes, there is a guardian angel, will be by your side. What is, it, what is it doing? Prompting you to a better cause. Sometimes he may, many times people said, I feel something. Something tell me. Something push me to go this way. That's the angel. The God in angels. That's the angel. I was about to go that way and make a U-turn. That's the angel. And also he said, choosing your words. Even the way to speak. An angel is going to influence you. Just a second. And influence our action. Go ahead, Sister Avila. Choosing, choosing your words, what you speak. When someone is riding with me in my car and they did not speak and they did not speak in faith or speak in righteousness or something, I'll just hold it. You can't say that in my car. Thank you, you yes. You want the angels away. Yes. That's good. You have a you good, you have a good understanding. You want the angels away so you can't talk like that. That's right. So this gives us a perfect example of the plan of salvation. 
not only Jesus Christ is making intercession for us, intercession for us, but we got the Holy Spirit working with us, the voice of God talking to us, the Holy Spirit making our prayer good, but also the holy angels working with us. That's amazing. We got everything working in our working together for good. Now we are working into, into detail what caused everything to work together for good. Because we got forces, good forces working together for us. That's amazing. Now, powerful heavenly warriors. An angel is a soldier. <clears throat> So what happened to the children of Israel in Isaiah chapter 36, verse 1 8? You know the children of Israel, they forget about God. And there was a king called Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a good king. And guess what? There was, a, there was as you see now, Sennacherib was a king of Assyria. Whatever you see going on in the Middle East took place a long time ago, was in the making. And in that time, they came and they said, okay, they surrendered Judah. And when they surrendered Judah, <coughs> so the king, Sennacherib, sent a messenger to Hezekiah. And he blasphemed God. He said, you see now, I can give you all the soldiers, all those horses. It's up to you now to give, to put a ride up on them. He blasphemed the name of God. But Hezekiah did something. He was, he went to Isaiah. The prophet is remember at that time you have a king, a prophet at the center. So a good king always go to the prophet for prayer. Hezekiah went to Isaiah. I said, Isaiah, what they did, they went on bended knees. They were surrounded, surrounded by an army, an enemy. And guess what? After they prayed to God, they put on bended knees, God sent a mighty angel. And let us go now, and it will be the closing of these things. And the Lord answered a prayer in difficult time. Guess what? Then the angel of the Lord, Isaiah 37, verse 36 to 38. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp, one angel only. <coughs> smote in the camp of the Assyrian, a hundred, four score and five thousand, one hundred eighty-five thousand. One angel only destroyed all of them. That's the same for us, brothers and sisters in Christ. The devil, the principalities, the powers of the wicked, they are not happy for us to be here. They want us to be dead. They want us to be destroyed. But if we put our faith in Jesus Christ, if we submit ourselves to Jesus Christ, and the death, the devil will flee from us. Sometimes we don't know what's going on. If our eyes were to open and we see all the devil of the angel fighting against us. But the Lord is more powerful. That's why remember Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. The devil has nothing, cannot pluck us out of the hand of God. Because our God is a powerful God. Let us close at this time I will call for the devil.